I don't need to waste too much time explaining the concept here. MW2, MW2. Single player campaign levels, tier list. Obviously these rankings are subjective to some degree, but I'm gonna do my best to try to factor in how each mission plays and feels. I'll mention any frustrating or unique elements and I'll give it a ranking. These games are obviously not the same mechanically and comparing them back to back isn't really fair, but it is interesting. And much more importantly, clickable. So I want to take some time to talk about it. Both of these games changed for the worse when played on Veteran in my opinion, so I'll be playing through them both on Hardened. Most of my footage for 2022 will be from my live streams that were played on Veteran, so don't be confused when watching. Seriously, these armored enemies on Veteran are my 13th reason. Also, I'm not buying the remaster, get bent. I'm mostly going to focus on gameplay, but I'll bring up story stuff when I find it relevant or interesting. I'm going to be super inconsistent about when I bring it up, so feel free to leave a comment complaining about it. This video ended up being a lot longer than anticipated, so if I was more thorough with the story, we'd be here all day. The original has a few more levels, so it'll go first, and it'll go last. I'm not trying to waste your time here, except for when I am. Like, like that? Right there? I, I wasted that. Obviously, the game starts with a tutorial with some iconic lines from the wonderful Sergeant Foley, played by Keith David. You don't end up hitting the damn thing and it makes you look like an ass. There's a lot of fun details. It's a neat area to just explore and see what everyone's up to. Next, we head to the pit to show General Shepard that we, an army ranger, are good at shooting things. I've played this mission a million times, but it's a unique little area and it's super replayable. You can rush through to complete the mission, or you can run it over and over to try to improve your score. Overall, short and sweet, and it gets the job done as a tutorial. B tier. Strike is less of a tutorial and more of an interactive cutscene. You play as Ghost, you walk through a short canyon, and you fire a missile at an Iranian general. Good job, Call of Duty, you referenced the thing that happened, but that's it for the mission. Glorified cutscene at best. D tier. Back in Afghanistan, we find ourselves in a firefight defending some bridge crewmen while they set up a bridge to help our vehicles cross a destroyed bridge. Something that stuck out to me in this section is the level of detail in the military parts of this game. The radio traffic is completely believable and comprehensible, despite it just being background noise. Every vehicle is a nickname, presumably given by the rangers using them, and it all just oozes personality. Next, we find ourselves manning a minigun on a Humvee and the vibe shifts. Now we're in a civilian populated area and we can't fire until fired upon. We transition from predator to prey and soon, all hell breaks loose. Eventually, we're forced into a school building and we move from room to room, clearing the area so our teammates can move through. It's simple Call of Duty stuff, but the pacing is great with the type of gameplay changing before it can get too repetitive. Good stuff, B tier. Wheels up in five. Roger. Marines are loading in now. Sergeant, I'm the way on this. In this mission, we are introduced to Soap McTavish. Like Ghost, all of his characterization is established in Warzone. Or maybe it isn't, I'm not watching those cutscenes, fuck you. Soap is established as an eager member of the team, and Ghost just kind of rolls his eyes, because he's an edgelord, lone wolf. A friendly helicopter is shot down, and the team moves toward the nearby buildings to set up security to get to the helicopter. Immediately, the change in approach for Modern Warfare 2019 is noticeable. The team at the front moves in a scripted fashion like you might expect, but there's a stairway on the left that can be taken as well, allowing for multiple approaches while the team moves the same way. This approach will lead to lots of issues later, but in sections like these, the mixture of great scripting in terms of AI and animations, along with accounting for tons of player action, allows for a lot of freedom, without compromising the crazy amount of detail at play here. The second building plays out a little more on rails, but room clearing in the new Modern Warfare games is fucking incredible, so I have no complaints. Quick side note here, I've never used GPN VGs, but the night vision of this game feels really video gamey. It wasn't perfectly realistic in 2019 or anything, but that aesthetic was way more appealing to me than this sort of colored in night vision look. Not a big deal, but I love the 2019 look. After this, we move to the helicopter and play wave defense. It's not a super deep encounter, and I think it runs for a bit too long, but for what it is, it's fine, I guess? The section uses fog pretty well to hide enemies until they reach a certain proximity, maybe 50 meters away. But the game gives you an M14 at the beginning of the level, which has a scope and can one-tap an enemy in the chest. So waiting for the enemies to approach, like Ghost tells you, isn't as advisable as it could have been. The second wave takes this idea and runs with it though, as the enemies bombard you with flares and smoke, pushing you back into the helicopter while they close the distance. This does a better job of making the helicopter feel overrun, and I do appreciate it. After this, the squad runs through an open field toward the target building, ignoring that all the enemies they've killed have had night vision. Once some poor fucking private gets sniped, they realize they made a little bit of an oopsie. We push forward and snipe the enemies on the building as we make our approach. Eventually, the building gets nuked from orbit and we can enter from multiple sides. Again, I really like the way this is heavily scripted, but still allows for multiple approaches. Depending on which side you enter, you may or may not get locked in a room with a grenade while the Iranian who throws it tells you to eat shit in Farsi. Really wish my teammates would enter the building, though. I would compare this to something like Clean House in Modern Warfare 2019. I would say that the level is definitely a tighter experience than this one, and I don't want to claim that there aren't branching paths available, but the gameplay is going to be the same 90% of the time on a repeat playthrough for most people. A slight expansion is appreciated, despite the slight dip in perfect AI behavior. 
Regardless, our target isn't here, so we head to a nearby warehouse. Here, we are introduced to the bane of my fucking existence, the armored enemy. These enemies will take a significant amount of body shots and as such require headshots. That's not so bad until you find out that one headshot doesn't do the trick. Well sure, he's wearing armor, how many headshots? Two? Nope. Three? Three will remove the helmet and stun them, and a fourth is required to finish them off. This isn't a super big deal in the first three difficulties, but once you hit veteran, these enemies will kill you in a split second if you don't instantly hit three headshots. You are D-O-N-E fucked! I think these enemies should be like the ones in Splinter Cell Blacklist. One to remove the helmet, one to kill. I could stand three total, but four is fucking ridiculous. Anyway, after the enemies are dealt with, the mission ends. Plot-wise, there's missiles, then a box, and they have US flags on them, so remember that, I guess. Overall, I'd call this mission a mixed bag, but I think the room clearing sections are excellent. And I definitely think the replay value added by the different entries bumps this mission up quite a bit. But the helicopter defense takes too long and kinda sucks. B tier. Cliffhanger begins on a snowy cliffside in Kazakhstan. You and your team leader, Captain McTavish, make your way toward a Russian base by climbing the mountain with ice picks. It's hard to put myself in the shoes of a first time player, but I think this section has enough tension and it's short enough that I wouldn't bother anyone playing for the first time. Soap tells us to use our heartbeat sensor, which is a really silly idea, but sure. After some synchronized shots, Soap gets himself into a sniping position and provides overwatch while we infiltrate the base. Sneaking isn't too complicated in this game, it's entirely based on line of sight as far as I can tell. But this is COD, not Assassin's Creed. The heartbeat sensor and the limited visibility caused by a blizzard makes the stealth pretty easy. But there are some sections of enemies that are best avoided, or you can blast a group if you have the skill. In addition, multiple paths can be taken to get to our next objective, the refueling station. After planting some C4, we meet up with Soap, who somehow crossed the entire base, avoiding all enemies, while we ran 20 meters across an airfield. Sure. Next, we complete the main objective and acquire a satellite component containing important intel. Remember this, it'll come up later. As we do, McTavish tells us he's been compromised, and this mission goes from science fiction to Michael Bay. We detonate the C4, and the mission turns into a massive firefight as we run to escape the base. The encounters here are pretty simple, just dudes in the open on a runway, as well as enemies on snowmobiles making chase. If you don't dodge them, they'll actually hit you, which is a detail I don't hate. Next, we run down a hill, and after a bit more shooting, acquire our own snowmobile. We then race up and down the mountain, blasting a G18 with our offhand as we move toward our alternate extraction. Can we just take a second and think about this? So our alternate extraction, our planned alternate extraction, Soap says as much, involves us commandeering enemy vehicles and jumping them over a fucking canyon? What? Why? Also, why are Call of Duty helicopters always running out of gas? This is really stupid, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a little iconic. Decent mixtures of gameplay types and an okay amount of freedom makes this level stand out from the more generic ones. B tier. This level is another short but sweet one. We started off in some water at a dock in Amsterdam after some brilliant detective work from last week. Roger the actual. Amsterdam. What the hell's Amsterdam got to do with this? It's a smuggling hub. Ports and canals are insecure. Iran has friends there. Great writing, guys. We start without a ranged weapon, except for a fairly large amount of throwing knives. Leave it to the 141 to bring the most practical weapons available. Luckily, everyone else here has suppressed guns on them, so we can do some tactical firearm acquisition. Price encourages us to return to the water frequently, especially to avoid patrolling boats, but to my surprise, the boats on the side don't prevent you from climbing them, so your path is your own. This is a nice little sandbox where you get to play Sea Predator. And like the other more open sections, I like the freedom and slowing of the pace. After this, you infiltrate a boat and discover the presence of cartel members working with Alcatala. Fuck you, Hayden. You continue breaching and clearing the boat, and the gameplay is good, but it only lasts about 30 seconds. Like I said, short, but sweet. A tier. This mission's kinda hard to talk about in this context, but I think weighing how shocking it was at the time, and how it affects the narrative is important, as well as its gameplay. In case you don't know, and still decided to watch this video somehow, no Russian involves you playing as the army ranger from the beginning of the game, now undercover for the CIA under a Russian terrorist named Makarov. Makarov wants to hurt the United States, and as such, he commits a massacre at a Russian airport and blames it on the US. Seems like a weird thing for an ultranationalist to do to their own country, but sure. A major issue I have with this plan from the US side is that Alan needs to earn Makarov's trust, and that's supposed to be the reason for his participation. But to what end? He clearly already has it if Makarov's taking him on this mission. And he's standing behind him with a fucking M240! The game accounts for this by having the terrorists be invincible and kill you if you betray them. But that doesn't make it more believable. And what's the point of getting close to a terrorist if your goal isn't to stop terrorism? 
Like, you'd want to get close to him to stop a massacre, not do a massacre to stop him. This would be easily fixed if Makarov wasn't the top guy. Doing the massacre to get to him could work, but as it is, you already have access to him, and you aren't doing anything to stop him. Presumably this was planned beforehand. Whatever. In terms of gameplay, this section is nothing but walking, but that description's a bit deceptive. There's obviously a lot going on, but it's more of a visual and audio experience, not an FPS level. There's lots of details that add to the horror that I think most people fail to draw attention to. Early on when the shooting starts, a few people surrender, not knowing what else to do. They're killed for the attempt, but I think it's believable that a few people would react in a way that's a bit out of the ordinary in such a terrifying circumstance. Some try to pull injured people to safety, and some can be seen trying to wake up dead friends or family. If you really immerse yourself in what's on screen, it holds up as a pretty harrowing experience. You could say that Infinity War just did it for shock value, and maybe they did, but I haven't seen a better portrayal of a mass shooting in a movie or game. My biggest complaint's basically a nitpick, but the idea of using an M240 for this is fucking insane. The wiki page for the M249 listed as a light machine gun. The one for the M240 listed as a machine gun. There is a lighter variant, the M240 Lima, that weighs 22 pounds, but that's not even the one used. According to the wiki, these insane people brought a 27 pound machine gun to their fight against unarmed civilians. Why not just an M4? Why did it need to be belt fed? It's so cartoonish it takes me out of the mission. The grenade launchers and machine guns make it seem a lot more video gamey than it should. After the inside is cleared, FSB shows up to fight us with about two dozen riot shields. The game gives us a grenade launcher and flashbang, so it's not the hardest fight ever, but I wouldn't consider it one of the game's best. It's over fairly quickly, and Alan is betrayed by Makarov, who leaves Alan's body as evidence that the attack was orchestrated by the American government. This goads Russia into war with the US. I don't believe you. This mission isn't done making no sense, though. In a cutscene before the mission starts, Makarov is shown to be a known ultranationalist extremist. Known to be responsible for a multitude of crimes against humanity, and he makes no attempt to conceal his face during the massacre. Is the entire international community brain dead? Okay, upon further investigation, there is a newspaper snippet later in the game that shows that Makarov was blamed for the attack. Upon further, further investigation, Soap says that nobody else knows that Makarov did it except for them. It was Makarov's up. Our credibility died with Alan. But with Russia assuming that the CIA was involved due to Alan's body being found. This doesn't seem like enough evidence for World War III between two nuclear powers, but what, what can you do? do? It seems like it'd be really easy for the US to blame Alan for this, but I guess not. Overall, this mission is unique among the entire industry, even now. And it's iconic and infamous, despite its gameplay being pretty weak. A tier. Tradecraft is extremely short, linear, and not that engaging. Our goal is to knock out some cartel members in public in Amsterdam, and eventually extract one of them for interrogation. This involves pressing the melee key when prompted and following the objective markers, not making a single decision for yourself. Right at the end, three cartel attack you while Price grabs the target. And the five seconds of gameplay where you try to shoot them without shooting any civilians is pretty good. But when the five seconds are over, so is the mission. Super linear, no replayability. Super short, super boring. D tier. Amsterdam's pretty though. I'm not going to dig too hard into the story at this point, because I think this is where it goes off the rails. We're hunting an arms dealer that will lead us to Makarov. If you want to know why that, and most of the stuff following after doesn't make any sense, I recommend this video by Patrician TV. We roll up to some kind of deal gone wrong or attempted kidnapping, and the target decides to do this. We give chase, and pretty quickly give him the old 556 limp. Tell Ronnie you got knocked the fuck out! Afterwards, we take two red shirts into a favela to try to find our primary target, Rojas. Meat, yes his name is Meat, fires his weapon into the air to clear out the civilians, and the real mission starts. Our goal is to make it to the other side while clearing our way through hordes of gang members, while doing our best to avoid civilian casualties. This does add a small bit of complexity to the level, because the gang, while being distinguishable from the civilians, are still wearing civilian clothing. And a civilian running away and a gang member running for cover are pretty easy to mix up. You really need to watch your back in this section due to the constant presence of rooftops and alleyways allowing for easy flanks from the gang. As we cross the favela, both Meat and Royce will inevitably die, leading us to clear our way to the top all by ourselves. The tight alleyways and frequent rooftops continue, leading to a higher difficulty than most of the mission so far. The mission continues in this fairly straightforward manner until we reach the top he's gonna go white. No, he's and Soap tackles the target he insists we need alive out of a third story window with a car to break the fall. 
Seriously, watch the wheel wall right here. The entire car fucking caves in. With that, the mission ends. This is the most quintessential generic Modern Warfare 2 mission I can imagine. Random context to put you in a cool location that doesn't really make sense, while a team of three guys fight an entire army by themselves, followed by the silent protagonist fighting an entire company of enemies without any tactical advantage whatsoever. This level relies entirely on the game's shooting mechanics, which are pretty good, but it doesn't do anything to justify its inclusion. C tier. This level. Oh, this level. We play as Mexican special forces contacted by Laswell sent to capture the big bad Hasanabi before he makes it across the border. America deserved 9-11. We will have no jurisdiction on the other side, so it's vital that we don't allow him in. So we walk up a hill and he's across. We shoot a few cartel members and we make our way up the wall. Laswell warns us that we'll have no jurisdiction or backup if we cross, and we're across. We make our way through a trailer park and use our Glocks to de-escalate? I understand the point, like pointing a gun at someone will usually de-escalate them, sure, but they're basically begging to get memed to hell and back at this point. The gameplay here is pretty on rails, but the de-escalation mechanic isn't the worst gimmick ever, I guess. Eventually, we get in a short gunfight with a cartel patrol and the cops show up. They start to arrest us, but then the cop in charge says we're hers? Wait, so the cops aren't just aware that we're assets for the CIA, but they're aware of Laswell specifically? Why? Is this local cop just a random close friend of Laswell? What is this, John Wick? Anyway, no need to think too hard about that, because that house over there is a cartel house. And instead of destroying evidence or extracting a sign before the cops check them, they shoot us with a rocket launcher. How the hell did they get our- Insert lazy Texas joke. They fire at us from the house and rush toward us. For some reason, I found Alejandro to be particularly useless at this part. Anyway, we can enter the house from a few locations and we have to sort between armed assailants, unarmed civilians, and a woman who drops her gun and surrenders. Again, not the best gameplay, but it is novel. Afterwards, we're captured. Instead of killing us or maiming us, we get knocked out and the room is lit on fire. What is this, Hitman Absolution? Oh dear. Oh dear. You've done a bad, bad thing. Are you serious? The most contrived and cliche thing possible. Also, there's a map of a shipment vital to the operation. Fuck me. Alejandro comes in and saves us. Who could have guessed? That's the mission. There you go. Overall, linear, pretty mediocre. The story's incredibly stupid. Not a fan. D tier. The cutscene before this mission establishes that the Russians snuck their invasion in by using the ACS module from the beginning of the game. Apparently, this MacGuffin is a friend or foe marker used by the air defenses in the US. That's really stupid, but it's hard to justify Russia invading the US, so you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. After fighting in the Middle East, Allen's unit of rangers is immediately redeployed to defend Washington DC from a Russian invasion. Putting aside how insane that and this entire cutscene with the air defense network is, the game takes the situation very seriously. And I appreciate how surprisingly dark it is. Listen to the music in this clip. Support, over. Hunter 2-1, all air support is already engaged. Additional ground support is en route to your position, but has encountered heavy resistance, over. Roger that, Overlord. Be advised. We have encountered enemy armor and are proceeding on foot. Over. Overlord copies all. Good luck. Now. Sarge, did HQ just tell us to go F ourselves? Pretty much, Corporal. It's pretty unique to have a war game set in America, especially in an FPS. It's pretty cool to see suburban neighborhoods in a game like this. I find the lack of civilians in the area to be a little cowardly, especially considering this game contains no Russian. I guess the view of American and Russian civilians was a little different in American media in 2009. You could say they were evacuated, but if that were true, how did all of them get out before any US military presence could be established? For most of the American front in this war, the Rangers are on the offensive, and the Russians are the ones defending areas. Whatever, I got sidetracked. My bad. We push through a few alleys and overtake a gas station while using smoke to avoid a BTR. Something I noticed during this section is how often the AI call out enemy locations and important information, not just to you, but to each other. By name. Corporal Dunn will yell out to Foley and ask for cover or to give an enemy location, and he'll acknowledge it back. It's pretty cool. This is where the mission starts to go off the rail. From here, we take down a gas station, climb a restaurant, defend against a few ways of enemies, get off the roof, Ramirez, get the on the roof, cross the street, pass the BTRs again, steal a Predator drone, blow up the BTRs, secure the Burger Town! Climb back up the restaurant to shoot a helicopter, fight more enemies, go back across the street to the diner a second time to shoot down another helicopter, then fight more enemies and head to the extraction. This all happens in the same three buildings. At least the mission ends with a cool line. Overall, this mission starts really strong, but drops off hard. C tier. So, Hassan's escaped and is set loose in America. What could he be up to? Where could he be going? Is he planning an attack? 
Nope, he's in Mexico again. Yep, he's apparently holed up in a cartel safe house. So we gotta go get him. Wait, wait, wait. So they snuck him across the border and then snuck him back across the border the other way? It starts off with a simple raid on the compound. It's over in a minute and it's pretty good. But uh, he ain't here, chief. And uh, Mexican army is here. But don't worry, guys, they're paid off by the cartel. So the British Special Forces under contract by the CIA working with Mexican Special Forces using an American PMC as backup shooting the Mexican fucking army. Won't cause any international incidents. This is going to get way worse soon, but not yet. We wait for the enemies to approach before engaging, allowing for Alejandro's men to escape. And once we get tear gassed, we follow them. We run downhill through a beautiful Mexican forest and stop every once in a while to kill the forces chasing us. This section is well paced and has cool vibes. It reminded me a lot of Lone Survivor. Eventually, we end up fighting uphill and I wanted to share a cool moment with you. I was down to my last magazine and my character called it out and Alejandro offered ammo and a prompt appeared that allowed me to refill ammo by clicking on him. This interaction felt really cool considering it was voice acted and everything and I really appreciated the detail. Afterwards, we end up crossing a cliff face and our poor team Teammate gets 360 nose. <laughs> the only solution is to go full Chris Hemsworth and dive off the cliff. We move down a river, engaging enemies as we do. It's pretty silly, but it doesn't last too long, and then we're pinned behind a rock while armored vehicles rain fire upon us. Deus Ex, best character. Commander Graves is here, and he's the leader of a PMC called Shadow Company, and they're here to provide air support. This mission is well-paced, action-packed, and doesn't overstay its welcome. Nothing super unique, but it's good pretty much all around, ignoring the moronic implications of the story. B tier. Sir, the militia's closing in. Almost 200 of them, front and back. We're on to fight our way to the LZ, let's go. Back in Rio, we meet up with 141. They can't get a response due to the invasion going on, but they aren't aware of it. So Soap contacts Nikolai from the first Modern Warfare, and they leave Rojas tied to a building. Rojas told them the location of a man that Makarov hates more than anyone, but we'll get to that later. This level is the most straightforward Modern Warfare 2 level imaginable. We fight through tons of enemies and tight quarters until we get to the end. There are a noticeable number of sections that allow a few lanes to be picked from, but that's it. No story stuff, no neat gameplay gimmick, just one big shooting gallery. Sorry, there is one gimmick. At the very end, Roach is separated from his team and he has to run through a series of hallways while squibs go off in front of him. It's not convincing at all. It feels like I'm shooting an action movie, not like I'm in one. This mission is boring and it shouldn't have been included. Nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't add anything. D tier. Before I cover this level, I want to take a moment to appreciate Philip Graves. This guy is fucking awesome. He's a total hype man, he's pretty charming, and he's a stone cold killer. Hook line and fucking sinker, that's what I'm talking about, Shadows! You know I love that shit! Calms gave me the gem. His guy saying yup is cringe, but he is sick, and he's my favorite character in this game. If someone gets turned into a hype meme template on TikTok, it's probably because they're hype as shit. Hook line and fucking sinker, that's what I'm talking about, Shadows! You know I love that shit! Also, Infinity Ward, let me play a Shadow Company in multiplayer. Since I wrote this, they literally did that, so thumbs up. Close air is played from the perspective of an AC-130 gunner as 141 moves on another compound in Mexico. You may be wondering, how is the US going to get away with drone striking a property in Mexico without inciting an international incident? And to that I say, shut up! We have access to a normal camera and a thermal one. The thermal one is good for locating targets, but the heavy presence of civilians makes the regular camera a better choice for most of the time. The level does a really cool job of using and gradually expanding the rules of engagement, requiring every building to be cleared before you can start spamming missiles at everything. The 20mm serves a much bigger purpose in this than in the Call of Duty 4 counterpart. Eventually, we're given the green light on the smaller buildings and we blow them apart. The destruction is really well done. I didn't expect to be able to just blow a building open and apart like I'm playing Teardown. This level also does a great job of characterizing Graves. He's professional and effective, but he clearly loves what he's doing and it shows. The mission alternates between civilian heavy sections that require patience and well-placed shots to succeed, and having tons of enemies for us to lay waste to. Fairly quickly, the mission is over. This one's a bit odd. I like how short it is, but it's followed by another, much longer AC-130 level. So it feels more like one big level when playing, but for the sake of consistency, I'll treat this in a self-contained way. It's not exactly original, but it uses the idea as well, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. <coughs> We're shadowing. A tier. Back in suburbia, General Shepard has commandeered Hunter 2-1, and Sergeant Foley is going to be destroying some Russian artillery. We're given a striker and set loose on the streets of the suburbs of DC. This level, when compared to the Hornet's Nest, really shows how the set dressing can affect how a level feels, and how dumb it seems. The kill count for the player on both levels is completely unreasonable, but in Exodus, since we're a member of a larger group, it doesn't feel like I'm a superhero, it feels like war. We're given a laser designator that allows us to send targets to the striker. It's best used on buildings and other areas that have a lot of cover, so you can deal with the enemies in the open. It gives you one more thing to manage, 
damage, and this game is relatively simple, so that's a good thing in my opinion. We continue moving forward through the streets and houses before receiving a somewhat cryptic message. Command wants us to head to an address nearby after dealing with the artillery. After we destroy the artillery, Shepard himself gets on the radio and tells us we're extracting a high-value individual from the address. When we arrive, we clear the building and make our way to the panic room. Inside is a dead Russian and the HVI, also dead. Foley makes note of the tattoos on the Russian, and if you're an eagle-eyed player, or more likely if you read the wiki, you'll notice that this is Victor, one of Makarov's men from the airport massacre. Who was this HVI? Why did Shepard seem to pull a personal favor to protect them? Fuck if I know. I think Infinity Ward cut whatever plotline this was out, because the wiki and YouTube comments don't hold any answers. I was actually super intrigued since I didn't remember this section, but it turns out I didn't remember it because it doesn't go anywhere. Regardless, simple but good gameplay, neat area to explore, short and sweet. B tier. Hardpoint takes 90% of what I liked about the first AC-130 level and throws it in the toilet. Before, we were at a cartel safe house in the country, being very careful to avoid collateral damage, and a single civilian casualty could end the mission. In this mission, after the team is ambushed, we can level every building in this Mexican town. This includes two potentially occupied school buildings and dozens of civilian homes. It's not just a building I'm saying is a school. The game puts a yellow rectangle around it with the word school. Now Mexican Special Forces and XSAS are collaborating with the CIA and an army general to drone strike Mexican schools. And no one has a problem with this? This legitimately doesn't come up in the story at all. This is a civilian occupied area and you can just level any building at will. It's so crazy to have these exact levels back to back. The gameplay is much the same, just with more enemies, and you have to press Q to launch flares every 30 seconds. It gets boring really fast, and the story implications are insane. I hate this level. F tier. This isn't directly attached to the levels, but I want to talk about this cutscene really quickly. Everything in the game so far has been to capture this man, a Cuts Force Major, second in command of the general we blew up at the beginning of the game. We killed his boss, now we have him. Are we going to interrogate him and find out where the missiles are held? I have no doubt you'll take pleasure in torturing me. Are we gonna ask for information on Alcatala? I want this bastard in permanent custody or looking up at the goddamn grass. General, killing Hassan is an act of war. Keeping him is illegal right now. He is too hot to hold. No, we're gonna let him go because killing him would be an act of war. What? Why? Why did we spend all this time capturing him? Was there no plan? Nothing changed last minute to orchestrate this. We just completed the mission and went, ah, oh, wait, too risky. It wasn't too risky when I was drone striking a Mexican school. The mission here is simple. We need to hit an old Russian castle that holds a prisoner Makarov wants more than anything. But they have nearby SAM sites on an oil rig that stop any attack by air. We go full Navy SEAL and attack by sub. I'm a big fan of how this mission starts, moving methodically looking for hostages. Here, we are introduced to the breaching mechanic. We place charges on the door and blow them, leading to a slow-mo shootout with the enemies inside. I like the presentation, but this oil rig is in Russia. These soldiers are Russian. These oil rig workers are Russian. Why are the workers held hostage? Why not keep them operating the rig? These rigs can produce millions of dollars worth of oil daily, and Russia's economy is pretty reliant on oil. This makes no sense at all. That's not mentioning how cartoonish the setup is. They have literally dozens of barrels of fuel covered in about 100 quadrillion pounds of C4. What the fuck? Anyway, after this, we put C4 on the corpses. That's a war crime, right? And move to a nearby position to ambush the enemy. We blow the charges and the mission is loud from there. This becomes more standard MW2 fare. We shoot down a helicopter and breach a few more rooms. Then we acquire thermal optics to shoot through some enemy smoke. Then we breach some more and the mission ends. It's fine, it's short, it has no story relevance, C tier. And mobile patrols and a ground team ahead of us. More like all foggillied up, am I right? <laughs> Recon by fire starts off pretty linear. You shoot a few guys, you don't shoot a few guys, and then you lay in some grass. This seems like a pretty transparent attempt at recreating the moment in All Gillied Up from COD 4 where a convoy drives right past you, but it's just more boring and lame. There's all this open area, but Price drags you right up to where the patrol's walking to add tension. All Gillied Up had radiation from Chernobyl as an excuse to push you toward them. This game just tells you to do it. The game also allows you to hide your weapon to aid in remaining undetected. The mental visual of Garrick trying to crawl with a sniper rifle and an M4 under his stomach is pretty funny. After this, we get dialogue options? What? What? These don't affect anything, but the banter is pretty damn good, and there's lots of different lines if you want to experiment. Not sure why it's here, but whatever, I guess. Keeping with this trend is the new backpack system. Now you can have like eight gadgets simultaneously. I'm assuming this is reused from DMZ, but at the time of writing, that mode isn't out yet, so we'll see. I can see why it's in this level specifically, but that'll be more apparent in a moment. Next, we get on top of a massive hill and look down at a warehouse. We need to clear the area by sniping the enemies, with Price telling us how far to adjust for bullet drop and occasionally repositioning to line up collateral shots. 
Neat. After this, Price sends us to clear the buildings while he provides Overwatch. Throughout this level, Gaz and Price's relationship is really well displayed as they banter back and forth. The way inside. I'll come to you from here. You go, sir. I'll cover you. Appreciate the offer, Gaz, but let me be clear. Move your ass, Sergeant. Area clear of cartel. All dead from rapid onset of holes in the head. Gaz clearly looks up to Price, and Price clearly has a strong bond with him. This is where the Far Cry Ghost Recon feeling kicks in. I'm assuming this area is taken from Warzone because it's massive and you can go pretty far before the game stops you. On the way there, a patrol stops nearby and you have to sneak past or fight them. But considering they all have armor, it's best to sneak past. This is much more blatant than the first time because it's not scripted, but these enemies go to your exact location to start searching. Regardless of which way you go, they'll walk directly past you and it's incredibly obvious to the point of being comedic. Regardless, however you get past them, you'll need to move on to the warehouse. From here, you have multiple options, three to be precise. You can use C4 on the doors to breach in and clear from there. You can shoot enemies or enter from the skylight, and you can throw gas in the ventilation system. I really appreciate the freedom granted here, especially since mixing and matching is totally doable. This section was really cool and I really liked it. Before moving on the second building, five armored enemies are sent to search the area. These enemies are split up and work as a little stealth challenge, and this is one of the very few times I enjoyed their inclusion. It mandates precision on the player's part, but not to the point of being overbearing. One sniper bullet is a lot easier than four M4 rounds. Pretty cool. Then Price does the old McTavish teleport from earlier. Same deal with this building as with the other set, but this time all the enemies are armored, so headshots are mandated. Again, the armor situation works okay with sniping, and the AI is forgiving enough if you miss that it's no big deal. When it comes time to clear these rooms though, the armored enemies rear their ugly helmets. For me, the appeal to room clearing in games is how quickly you and the enemy can die if either of you aren't looking exactly where you need to be when you need to be. It's about going to the right place at the right time and being very fast about it. Violence of action gets completely upended when I need to stop and place four shots on a single enemy's head, especially considering the CQB is done solo. These enemies should never have been put in these situations, or maybe in the game at all. Putting Warzone armor cracking in the same series as the war crime simulator that was 2019 feels like an awful tonal shift and is something a lot more stupid. Regardless, we move into a tunnel that leads to a docked sub used for smuggling. As this happens, Laswell is attacked on her boat and we can do nothing but watch as she is captured by Alcatala. I think I'm supposed to be emotionally invested in her, but I honestly don't care at all. The last game framed her as a bureaucratic body standing in the way of doing what's needed to be done, but in this game we're like friends, I guess? Anyway, this mission's pretty tight. It demonstrates this game having a bit of an identity crisis, but it's still really fun and I'm a huge fan of it. When I remember this campaign in a few years, this level will stick out in my mind. Honestly, the only flaw is the patrol AI and the armored enemies. Fuck it, S tier. The Gulag is another super average level. You snipe some enemies, then you drop in. Then you fight enemies, then you fight through some empty cell blocks before a short defense section and some more empty cell blocks. This part is very chaotic and difficult, but in a fun way, or maybe I'm just weird. Regardless, you push through tons of riot soldiers and blow up in another wall to find the only fucking prisoner in this prison, apparently who, plot twist, is Captain Price. Then you run through some hallways, cool set piece, yay, and then get Dark Knighted to safety. I don't know, man, the mission's fine, I guess, but it's pretty boring. C tier. Check. Good copy. Check. I'll try to be quick. Unlike this level, it starts off okay. Farah's here. Remember Farah? Anyway, she's a cool Mad Max lady now, and her men are gonna help us get Laswell back. They're in a convoy, so we're gonna fight our way up from the back. We start as Overwatch, shooting at the convoy, but after a few minutes, we get hit with a rocket. Fortunately, Nikolai and Gaz are main characters, so instead of the helicopter getting fucked, Gaz just falls out. This leads to a neat section where you hang upside down while shooting at the enemy. The main thing I find really dumb is that Nikolai finds out Gaz is dangling, but doesn't increase his altitude, except when Gaz tells him so he can narrowly avoid vehicles. It's downright moronic. It paints Nikolai, Price, and Gaz as completely incompetent. An easy fix would be making the player occupied immediately so Gaz doesn't have time to radio right away. That way, Nikolai doesn't realize what's going on. Regardless, we cut ourselves free onto an enemy truck and steal it using the Warzone animation. Ick. I can't quite figure out why I hate this so much. Maybe it's because I can steer the vehicle while I'm stealing it, but it just looks so stupid. I'd be okay with it once, but you can jump onto the roof of your vehicle and onto another to steal it, and that's the only way to repair damage to your vehicle. This is so slapstick and stupid, and again, it's butchering the tone. I can't take this seriously, I just can't. You can lean out of the vehicle to shoot, and the vehicle will steer itself, and if you go onto the roof, the same thing happens. You almost never get shot while leaning, so there's very little difficulty to this section. It takes way too long, and it's boring. Bad combo. 
After a while, we jump on a prices vehicle and get a grenade launcher. Suddenly, all the enemies are armored, so using a gun isn't an option until the grenade section is finished. Very nice game, very subtle. Then we jump onto another enemy vehicle and drive through mines and shoot at bomb drones. Even more shitty, boring driving, then we get to the convoy and shoot a few enemies. Walk up to the SUV, and Laswell does some girl bossing. I hate this level so much, I'm considering bumping hardpoint up to D tier. Fuck this stupid level. F, 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 F. In DC once more, we find ourselves in a makeshift hospital beneath the National Mall. Injured soldiers are strewn about, and the message and feeling this area gives are very clear. This is war, and we are losing. We head outside to see DC converted to hell on Earth. There are trenches and lawns, helicopters in the air, and the Washington Monument looks like it's barely holding together. The music here is also really well done by Hans Zimmer and gives the tragic feeling the scene is going for. The song on the soundtrack is called DC Burning. This campaign has a lot of things that make it hard to take seriously, but these levels play completely straight and feel really, really cool. We push across the street into the Department of Commerce building and work our way up. We clear out enemy firing positions to allow for evac nearby to get more people out. It's standard MW2 stuff, but the setting and atmosphere carry it really far. We're in really famous buildings at night lit by flares and fire. It feels like another place entirely. We make our way further up and clear out a position with a sniper rifle and a few javelin missiles. I've heard Russians are fond of those. We start sniping enemy javelins, but super quickly we have to turn around and protect our back. Then we blow up a few vehicles before Overlord calls us and tells us we're being overrun. We rush to the roof where SEAL teams extract us and we're given access to the strongest minigun known to man. The music has an epic sound for the action, but still has strings in the background, subtly pointing at the tragedy in the dialogue. If you aren't listening to the radio traffic, you're missing the whole point of this level. You took that site over, but you couldn't hold it. And now some of the people aren't going to make it. If you're letting yourself get immersed in this, there's a feeling of responsibility there. We did try, and it wasn't enough. None of the characters bring any attention to this. A worse game would have the characters bemoan their failure, but the subtlety is nailed, which is a weird thing to be saying about Modern Warfare 2. After this, we take a hit from a SAM site and fully decides if we're going down, we're taking the site with us. Next, we defend the crashed helicopter, but most of you probably know how that goes. This mission has some of the best atmosphere in these games, and I can't sell that hard enough. Love this level, even though the gameplay is kinda just fine. The pacing is great, the dialogue is great, and the music is great. I'm tempted to go S tier, but I'll stick with A. This level really surprised me. I kinda hate the beginning, but once it lets loose, shit gets crazy. We need to capture a cartel boss, Elsa Nombre, who may know the location of Hassan or the American Missile. The boys hatched the brilliant plan of sending in soap with the promise of intel and with Graves' patch as evidence of Shadow Company. You know you can just stitch a patch and say it belongs belongs to an American PMC, right? Alejandro gets in undercover with no explanation whatsoever. Alejandro, how did you not die? Listen. Ah, the J.J. Abrams method. Classic. A good question for another time. He tells us that we need to tell our interrogator the truth. Like, not just the truth. He specifically gives us the answers to the questions we're going to be asked. I expected some kind of twist or multiple outcomes here, but no, it's much dumber than that. On the way to the interrogation, this guy beats up his worker for doing drugs on the job, showing that he's spooky and bad. Ooh. Then we get to our destination and we find out it's actually a female Sicario that's in charge. She asks us questions and if we don't tell the truth, she asks us again. If we lie another time, she shoots us in the face. Let me get this straight. So the game gave us a multiple choice answer test, then before the test started, gave us the answer. Then, if we get it wrong, it shoots us in the face and reiterates the correct answer. This section is fucking stupid and insulting. What's the point of giving us dialogue options if the options don't do anything? I assume there'd be different outcomes to add some replayability, but no, it's literally as simple as the game saying, press A, and then asking if you want to press A or press B. This should have been a cutscene. Also, the boss abuses their people to show how badass they are trope stopped being cool right after Darth Vader did it. And stacking it makes it more embarrassing, not less. But regardless, we're taken upstairs, given a mask. We're here, can't be seen with a cartel. Comms are hooked in. Radio check. That's convenient, but I guess it's believable. And told to wait while the mommy Sicario lady talks to the boss. Then we're set loose in the party with the goal of reaching the top floor where the boss is. There are a ton of ways to do this and a surprising amount of stealth mechanics for a Call of Duty game. You can jump a guard and take his gun, you can throw bottles to lure enemies, and you can throw knives to kill him. There's a ton of rats around the map and hidden things to make use of. And you can get through this whole section without killing anyone. If you head to the basement, there's an armory with suppressed weapons, unsuppressed weapons, and a plate carrier. This whole area can be done loud too if you want. I was gonna give this level an S tier originally, but here's the issue. It auto saves every five seconds. Grab an item, checkpoint. Walk through a room, checkpoint. Stand still for 10 seconds, checkpoint. And worst of all, get detected, checkpoint. 
This means any attempt at trying a different approach or retrying once detected is gone. To restart the section, you have to restart the whole level and redo the interrogation section. You can revert very quickly if you're on top of it, but you won't know that on your first run, so more than likely, you're gonna get forced to go loud. It's such an egregious mistake in such an otherwise amazing level. I love seeing experimentation in these games, but man, what a fuck up. Still gonna give it A tier, but it's such a missed opportunity. Infinity Ward, you can still patch this, please, I believe in you, please, you can do it. Price, I can barely see Roach is shooting my satellite feed. Too much interference. Do you see him? Captain Price knows what we know. America is losing, and something drastic has to be done. He sends Shepard a picture of a Russian nuclear sub, to which Shepard says no. Price doesn't elaborate on what his plan is, but he does hang up on Shepard. Guess we're on our own for this one. No US support. Let's keep that in mind. We parachute in, and Price takes us through a stealth section. It's pretty slow and not that fun. Follow Price, synchronize a few sniper shots. Let him pass. We then walk through the middle of a street, super tactically, and are immediately spotted by two enemy BTRs. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, I lost it. We run away, but fortunately they shoot the trees instead of us, leading to more scripted stealth sections. Still pretty boring, this is also the section you reuse for the Spec Ops mission invasion. After that, we're given controls for a Predator drone, and uh, where did we get a Predator drone? These things run like 4 million, and each missile is 150k. Price hung up on Shepard and he was still able to float us a fucking Predator drone? Oh, I'm sorry, TWO PREDATOR DRONES?! Soap says these things don't grow on trees, I bet they fucking don't, where did you get this?! After a short gunfight, we're given a timer to get to the sub before they dive. It's surprisingly short, which I do appreciate. The music and the timer add tension these missions often lack. Once Price makes it, we defend for a short while, then Price nukes the US! What? Why? Okay, so the idea is that since the US is losing the war, Price needs to level the playing field between Russia and the US. His plan is to detonate a nuke near the US in order to create an electromagnetic pulse that will destroy electronics in the area, crippling Russia's vehicles and communications in that area. Cool plan, except that that applies to all the American forces too! That's ignoring any off-stream environmental effects, and much more pressingly, the civilian power grid. No clean water, no heat, no transportation, no supply lines for food and other supplies. This will kill thousands, if not millions, of American civilians. Who wrote this? What the fuck? Anyway, we'll get to the real reason when we get to the next level. This one's pretty mediocre, but the timer at the end was neat. C tier. Before we get to the level, I want to cover the cutscene. Valeria is interrogated and some super forced drama between her and Alejandro has acted phenomenal. Insurance. What the fuck does that mean? Puedes sacar la puta cabeza del culo por un segundo! Puta madre, Alejandro! If you feel a whiplash in terms of pros and cons here, yeah man, me too. For real though, the dialogue is really stupid and cliche, but the acting is actually really good. Graves threatens her, but like the rest of this game, every punch is completely pulled. Remember Modern Warfare 2019 when we threatened to murder a man's woman and innocent child in front of him? Now we just ask questions and make vague threats. As edgy as 2019 was, at least it was willing to try to take itself seriously. Regardless, apparently the cartel has control of an oil rig? Question mark? And that's where the missiles are stored. So we do some cool sneaky boy shit and board it. The first half is some extremely on rails room clearing and a simple combat encounter. I'd say below average for this game. Once we reach the missile, we realize the controls are on a nearby cargo ship, so we take a boat there. This part really endeared me to Graves. He's really likable in my opinion, and this level continues to characterize him as a fucking bro. Once we're on deck, we push to the bridge! Fast! Secure those controls! Stop this missile! Yeah! Let's have ourselves a gunfight! This next part's really silly, but I appreciate the effort. Cargo containers along the ship drift around because of a storm, leading to cover shifting around during the fight. These containers can crush us too, so it's important to maintain awareness of enemy locations and container locations. The idea that the containers can be loosely sliding around the place is hilarious though. I've never been on a cargo ship, but I find it unlikely that they just let them slide around without securing them at all. After this, we do some more breaching and clearing before reaching the missile controls. It's worth noting that Graves and Alejandro continue to be completely useless in these encounters. The puzzle consists of pressing two buttons when told and then knowing what rows and columns are. That's not a joke, I'm serious. There's no repetition or repeat in difficulty. He asks you for a letter on a spreadsheet and you tell him the letter. That's it. Seriously, fantastic puzzle, guys. This could be considered a setup for later, but it's not deep enough to justify it. Really dumb section. Mediocre level. D tier. We start off in the helicopter crash from of their own accord. It plays out the same way, but I want to show it to you this time because I love the feeling of getting completely overwhelmed that it provides. Next, we're sent into space to watch the nuke go off. It also kills the astronaut for some reason. Back on the ground, the nuke triggers an EMP, grounding all the helicopters and disabling all nearby lights, vehicles, and even our optics. We run from the chaos and get to shelter. I really like this interaction between Foley and Dunn. What the hell are we gonna do now, man? Russia's got us outnumbered, shit's falling from the sky, we're screwed, man. We're totally hooped. 
Get it, Pip Corporal. My weapons still work, which means we can still get some ass. Next, we make our way through the streets, and this is the best atmosphere this game has to offer. We're in a city at night, lit only by road flares and fire, yelling a sign at every shadowy figure, hoping they respond correctly. We meet up with a runner who tells us to meet at Whiskey Hotel, the White House. We make our way there, getting into a few firefights on the way. The scale of these fights is pretty restricted for this game, and it helps them to be a bit more believable. There's a section in an office that's super dark, but every once in a while, lightning lights up the room and exposes enemy position. It's really cool. There's another cool set piece where Russian soldiers are trying to help their comrades out of a BTR, but we kill them before they can. Then this exchange happens. Those guys inside. What about Holy shit! Eventually, we make it to the president's bunker and the mission ends. This mission does a lot to respect the situation the characters are in, despite how stupid getting there was. No question. S tier. When we return to the base, Graves tells us that we've been relieved, and that he's taking Alejandro's base. This doesn't make any sense, but I like the detail that Graves' subtitle turns red during the cutscene. That's cool. Graves continues to be a badass in this scene, but the plot armor in it is really bad. was a big mistake, brother. It did not have to be like this. It looks cool, but I don't find it believable that Ghost, Graves, and Soap all make it out of this alive. Regardless, this starts the most unique level in the game. It starts off stupid, with the shadows gunning down the citizens of this Mexican city for no real reason at all whatsoever. These guys have American flags on their helmets, do they really think no one's gonna record it and get the whole PMC exposed? I shouldn't say no reason. The given reason is that they're looking for Hassan and 141. Hot take, but the risk of this getting out is much, much higher on a personal level than the risk of Hassan getting away. This is incredibly stupid and juvenile writing. Regardless, let's get to the gameplay. And so guerrilla warfare. We limp to a nearby house where we're introduced to crafting? We can combine materials to make a single-use pry tool to open doors and locked boxes. We can make Molotovs, smoke bombs, and even trip mines. This may sound gimmicky, but the resources are set up pretty well to reward good decision making and exploration. Here's one of my favorite examples from early in the level. This door can be opened with a pry tool and a safe can be found inside. It's not unlocked though, the solution is inside the room. It's not a complicated puzzle or anything, but there's some basic deduction and simple math involved, and when the safe is opened, a suppressed deagle can be found inside. It doesn't have much ammo, but it's about a magazine of suppressed gunfire for your trouble. And I find that rewarding and interesting, especially for a COD campaign. The early sections are pretty linear, but they quickly open up and the solutions go from mine ambushes and shotgun sprees to complete ghosting of areas. I'm a big fan of freedom in games if you couldn't tell. Next is a section with a flooded tunnel. I felt like Jaws in this section. It's a neat idea. After this, there's a scripted moment that's kind of cool, but it results in our position being known and a bunch of armored enemies surrounding us. This is the best use of armored enemies in the game in my opinion. They're searching for us and we have to make use of smoke bombs, molotovs, and mines to get the upper hand, since shooting them probably won't go our way. This is also the section where I realized their AI is actually kind of cool. They do radio checks, and if someone doesn't answer, they investigate. Good find. Something else you can notice in this clip is that the audio isn't just playing over the radio. At first you can hear it from the radio, but when you move closer you can hear the guy speaking. The AI here is understated, but really detailed in a way that adds to the feeling of being hunted. There's not much after this and the level ends. This level will be what people remember when they think about this game in 10 years. Really novel stuff for Call of Duty and it's a lot braver than I would expect. Super atmospheric, I just wish the plot didn't suck. S tier. This mission's pretty short, but I'll run you through it. We need to retake the White House. After crossing the lawn with no cover whatsoever, we make it inside. When we do, we hear a broadcast. We need to get to the roof before the White House gets leveled. I was going to complain about the White House having power, but if anywhere in the world was going to resist an EMP, that's probably the place. We do some fighting and race to the roof to signal the countersign. The dialogue at the end is pretty cool. So, when we go into Moscow, not soon enough, man. I know we're going to burn it down when we get there. Oh, uh, when the time's right, call me. When the time's right. I'm glad this level's in the game, but it's not much to write home about. C tier. Soap and Ghost head to Alejandro's safe house, and despite being given its location, they weren't told it's booby traps, so they break in. 
After Ghost tries to kill him, the guy who was supposed to die in that fire earlier tells our boys that Alejandro is in a prison being run by Shadow Company. Before the actual mission, there's a bit of setup here that I want to point out. It's pretty fucking overt, but I'll just play it. On the run. I was on the run. Ghost waited for me. Of course, no? No. Yes. We're a team. All of us. In case you're five years old or don't know what the word subtext means, Soap expects Ghost to say no because he's an edgy lone wolf man. But Ghost values Soap as a friend and teammate after the last mission, so we're a team now. We do a little sniping and make our way up the wall. We make it to a security room and do the guided camera gimmick from 2019. I prefer to think of it as the guided camera gimmick from Watch Dogs, but regardless, the section isn't terrible, but it does get boring quick and goes on a bit too long. After Ghost makes it through and plants bombs in some cars, we open a door and start a firefight, making our way through the prison. The level at this point becomes the most standard Call of Duty level imaginable. Hallways with enemies in them. We're given a backpack with an ungodly amount of grenades. My suspicion is that the developers wanted to have riot shield enemies in a prison to call back to the gulag in the original Modern Warfare 2, but they didn't want them to be annoying. It definitely helps, because lighting these guys on fire does help get out some of the rage from the Riot Shield knife players from multiplayer. When we free Alejandro, we get another nice bro moment, then we free his soldiers and give him our backpack o guns. In this game, I don't think I saw a single one of Alejandro's men die. The idea that we had an entire base we broke into this prison to free like six people feels really silly to me. And like the rest of the game, it's full to the gills with tons of plot armor. I'm not asking for more Vorkuta, but if we aren't going to complete this mission with stealth, we should at least have the numbers to survive. A helicopter shows up, but is shot down by Captain Price! Whoa! This reveal is cool for about two seconds until you ask questions like, How did he know we were here? Price responds to this by saying Laswell told him Shepard went dark, but that doesn't explain how he knew we were here. Was he also coincidentally on the way to break out Alejandro as well? And he didn't try to contact Ghost or Soap? Sure game, why not? I don't know, I didn't dislike this level, but it's super generic and I have no desire to replay it. It probably deserves C, but I'm gonna say D tier. Sniper's in position. Strike team go. Engage Mecha up on site. Roger that. Solid copy. Shepard has two potential locations to find Makarov, so one for one is split up to find him and kill him. Ghost and Roach being separated from Price and Soap makes him feel a little shaky in terms of safety. In a game with plot armor this strong, separating the new characters from the old characters is a little concerning. Immediately we are hit with an ambush, and I actually really appreciate how well this is done from a tactical perspective. There's a minefield with enemies in front of it in ghillie suits, and smoke is used for the second wave to push in. In addition to this, enemies are put nearby to push up to the high ground on the side. The only unbelievable part of the situation is that we survive at all. Once we fight through it, two UAZs drive past, but we destroy them with javelin. Fun fact, if you try to check the bodies, there aren't any. We push into the mansion and start clearing it. We do it, and Makarov is nowhere to be found. We start collecting intel and have to defend it for Makarov's reinforcements. We're given an armory and multiple stockpiles to choose our weapons from, and Ghost encourages us to use claymores. This section is pretty freeform, and I appreciate that. You can defend from multiple places, and enemies come from multiple directions, so as long as you defend the DSM, you're good to go. I find it weird that the DSM from the beginning is a satellite MacGuffin to stop air defenses, but this DSM is basically a massive flash drive to collect Makarov's intelligence. As we fight off the enemy forces, our generic 141 allies that were created for this mission die like the ones in Favela, with dialogue and everything. We move downhill with ghosts through more enemies until we're hit, and Ghost has to drag us to safety. Multiple helicopters show up to the LZ, carrying dozens of Shadow Company mercenaries. Wait, if you had this many guys, why did like six of us go on this mission? When we get to the helicopter, Shepard retrieves the DSM and kills Roach and Ghost. <laughs> leading to the tears of 12 year olds everywhere. This twist is stupid. Shepard wants to cover up his involvement with Alan, but Russia's already invaded. I've seen lots of people claim that Shepard leaked Alan's status as a CIA operative to Makarov, but as far as I can tell, there's no evidence to support this. What did 141 know that Shadow Company now doesn't? What's a more dangerous secret? The known CIA operative was assigned by you or that you had British special forces murdered by a PMC to cover that up? That's ignoring the threat that they now pose to your life if you mess it up. This betrayal is undercooked and pretty dumb. The level's fun enough, especially the defense section. I like it. B tier. I uncovered redacted intel regarding a black bag operation conducted by General Shepard and carried out by Shadow Company. This level is a flashback told by Laswell from the perspective of a Shadow Company merc. It's a neat way to do what is essentially an interactive cutscene. I know I attacked the first level for that, but this one is at least a little interesting to play through. We are part of a convoy illegally transporting the missiles Sasan had hold of in the beginning. We are ambushed by Russian mercenaries, and while Graves begs us for reinforcements, Shepard chews him out. We are promptly murdered, and the missiles are stolen. There's really no explanation as to why Shepard moved the missiles this way or why it was frowned upon, but the concept of Shepard doing all he can to bury the evidence isn't all that unbelievable. But what did it have to do with 141? Or Alejandro and his men? We didn't have any evidence or knowledge of these events until he had Graves try to bury us. We already had our hands on Hassan and he didn't let anything slip. What did he think we would find out? 
Why did he think we'd give a shit about the cover-up? Another thing I find stupid in this scene is the fact that no one came up with the idea of recording the call with Shepard. He essentially admits to everything, and not to be controversial, but being an army general is essentially a political position. Just send this to CNN, or is this some sort of mutually assured destruction gentleman's agreement, where both sides agree not to expose each other's identities and secrets? This whole thing feels really stupid and contrived, but the mission's cool, I guess. See it's here. I hate to have my commentary get so repetitive, but these levels aren't putting in quite as much legwork, so neither will I. The gimmick is simple. Makarov's men and Shepard's men are here and they're fighting each other. This is a cool concept, but in execution, it's a bunch of dudes standing still shooting at each other. And I've seen Gmod encounters with more believable scripting. We push through and kill enemies as you'd expect, but the action movie appeal is really worn off at this point. There's no pause for pacing, it's just bam, 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 and it's not like that started recently in the story, but there were gimmicks and set pieces to help carry it. There was a spawn that really annoyed me, right as I got to a road, six or seven enemies just appeared next to it and I got ambushed with no warning. I don't know, there's not a lot to talk about. Price calls Makarov on an enemy's radio and Makarov gives us Shepard's location. There's a few layers here. He tells us the code name for a place and says, you know where it is. It's a secret base in Afghanistan. How does Makarov know where it is? How does Price know where it is? And how does Makarov know that Price knows where it is? This is hinting at some serious history the game is absolutely not gonna substantiate. On a different note, Nikolai doesn't get much characterization in these games, but he has a few good lines here. Okay, Captain Price, I am on the way. Trying to get the situation under control before I get there, okay? Price, I am approaching the boneyard. I see you do not have situation under control. Very unsafe to land. It looks like when I was in Afghanistan with the Soviets. When we get to the end, OMG, one of the red shirts survived. That's pretty super. Oh, that's it. That's the mission. I'm bored. D tier. Back at the safe house, what's left of 141 and Los Vaqueros get told to get bent by Shepard and decide to take back their base. Ghost's arc is rushed to the finish line, but taking as a payoff in the abstract, I actually like it. They all put on Ghost masks to show that they're united, and Ghost removes his mask in front of everyone and puts on the cloth mask to show trust toward his team members and to be uniform with them. It's more of a character arc than a COD game's ever had that I can remember, which isn't saying much, but still. He immediately returns to his old mask after this mission though, which hugely disappointed me. This whole Ghost team thing is literally only for this level. Anyway, we start in an access tunnel, which isn't the most unbelievable believable thing considering Alejandro probably knows the space very well, and that Shadow Company might not have found it yet. At least that's what you may think until you find out it has laser beams and enemies guarding it. There's something funny about the realism of using smoke to detect the lasers while also having the lasers emit a sound for no reason. The section is pretty on rails, but it's a great example of how the main characters in this game move like operators. I love the way that they walk and handle their weapon. The mocap is genuinely impressive, and characters move like this in multiplayer, which is even more impressive. Anyway, after playing Metal Gear Solid for a few minutes, we make it to the surface. Unfortunately, this entire airfield is filled with people who will not notice us in broad daylight. Gaz and Alejandro move to take Valeria while Price gets in a helicopter with a red shirt pilot. I'm not setting anything up by the way. We then cut to the other team featuring Soap, Ghost, and Rodolfo. Captain Price uses the stolen helicopter to destroy the gate and the rest of us push inside. The van we started gives us a plate carrier which functions like the one in Warzone. We can add armor plates to extend our health with a total of three. I don't really like this system because it compromises the tone but if enemies are going to have it at least it's fair this way. From here we need to push into the main building and Captain Price can be used through a spotter scope to acquire targets and destroy them. This is definitely C tier generic gunfighting but I've had worse. Once we make it to the building the perspective changes back to gas. From here we enter the building and chase Graves out of it, clearing it as we go. He escapes over a wall while Price gets shot down. Shouldn't have had the red shirt driving, buddy. Here's where what I thought was a C tier turns quickly into something resembling an F tier. We are at a set of shoot houses and Graves is in a tank. Graves goes from a charismatic and somewhat believable villain to a mustache twirling loser who argues with Soap about whether it's cooler to be a PMC or in the actual military. Come on home when you had the chance, Soap. You and that asshole with the mask? Hide behind that uniform? You wore that uniform. That uniform was a limitation. I shed that skin. Like a fucking snake. Like a fucking snake, son. I'm recording this after, but Graves says that his uniform was a limitation, and that he shed it. And then Soap says that he's a snake, and his response is that he's a soldier. What the fuck? Why are you so proud of being in the army anyway? You're British Special Forces working for America. That's still not explained, by the way. It didn't make sense in the original, and it sure as hell doesn't make sense now. That's ignoring how stupid the actual boss fight is. They wanted the tank to be able to destroy the shoot houses made of concrete. That's not a problem. What is a problem is that the shoot houses aren't made of concrete, they're made of paper mache. The physics here are completely screwed. Instead of exploding and being launched as shrapnel, the building converts into blocks like it's Minecraft and slowly float through the air. We're running around an area looking for C4 to throw out a tank that somehow can't kill us, and the dumbest thing going on is the physics. After like 10 charges, the tank finally explodes and that's that. Also, Price is alive, isn't that crazy? I don't think a protagonist has ever died in a Modern Warfare game. Everyone hang on! That's one 
unless lose that. <laughs> We don't check the body, so Graves will be in Modern Warfare 3. I would say C, but ruining Graves as a character knocks us down to a D. This mission starts with Price going on a schizoid rant about how this is a suicide mission, and Soap just kind of awkwardly goes along with it. Remember us for this, because out of all our vast array of nightmares, this is the one we choose for ourselves. We go forward like a breath exhaled from the earth with vigor in our hearts and one goal in sight. We will kill him. We definitely, definitely, definitely aren't going to survive. I like the idea of knowing you won't make it out and choosing your equipment accordingly, but if you actually plan on killing him, why don't you have a plan just in case? Price tells Nikolai it's a one-way trip, but it's not, so why do this? I know the answer is cheap drama, but it's undercut when there's no consequence to it. Why bother? Anyway, Shepard's fallback is in Afghanistan for some reason. Why even ask questions at this point? We do some synchronized sniping, and then there's this cool upside down rappel set piece. I'm not a big rappel guy, but how is Price controlling his breaking? Regardless, the coolest part of this mission is watching this guy's life leave his eyes. We move into a cave and do a little sneaking before the bad guys decide to breach and clear their own cave. This level, more than any other, suffers from the most insanely horrific plot armor ever. Like, it's not just a gameplay thing, it's written into the plot. This entire place is rigged with a comically large amount of explosives. They go off behind us, and then Shepard calls in a danger close airstrike on his own men immediately afterward. The C4 is just far enough behind us, and the airstrike is just far enough in front of us that we are completely fine upon slaughtering our way right through. We get to a cave, and that ends the mission. The beginning is okay, but the whole thing is just more generic gunfighting. The night vision in the cave is cool, I guess, since both sides have IR lasers on their guns. More mid, I guess. C tier. Chawanda Bravo 6 actual perimeter is secure. We have a possible hit on the missile container. We're moving in now. All right, time to start wrapping up. We go back to Valeria, and she tells us without any interrogation that Hassan is going to use the third missile in Chicago today. Apparently, that's enough information to get us the exact building. And she isn't lying. And Hassan didn't change his plan when the operation was compromised. So in we go. Gaz takes a team of Marines by boat, and Price and Soap take a helicopter to the roof. We start with a repelling section. If that was meant to be a callback, I actually kind of appreciate it. The gameplay is pretty simple. Movement is pretty restricted, and there's obviously no cover, so it's a game of figuring out the enemy locations and shooting them as fast as possible. It doesn't overstay its welcome before Price destroys a window, and you start clearing the server room. It's not that unique for this game, but I've noticed that Price is especially fucking useless during this part. He does nothing. The server room works well as an area for room clearing, since the areas are all extremely tight together, but there's tons of paths that need to be worried about. It's especially hard since no one is helping you. There's also multiple enemies with shotguns who will one-shot you, even on hardened, so that's fun. And if you weren't pissed off enough, there's also multiple armored enemies. Plus, there's a riot shield guy! We get to the control room and it's empty. So, we repel down some more, and an enemy conveniently RPGs a window so we can R6 our way in. The lobby has even more armored enemies, but we clear it and head down the stairs. After a bit of gunfighting and a few contrivances featuring elevators, we end up alone in a floor under construction with no weapon, a suitcase with the missile controls, and armored enemies chasing us. This combines the crafting and stealth of alone with the missile defusal minigame from the oil rig. We need to hide for long enough to allow Laswell to walk us through disarming the missile. This can be interrupted without much loss of progress, which is good, because the window for doing it is extremely short. It's a little silly, but I actually like this section. You can craft traps to stun the enemies, craft pry tools to access toolboxes, and even put metal in microwaves to distract the enemy. I really do like it, but when you get a hold of their guns, they have literally three rounds. Remember, it takes four to kill an armored enemy, so you can't use their guns, which is completely unbelievable. The window for stopping the missile is actually really short, so that part of this dynamic can't last too long. After the missile is detonated, Ghost gets on the radio to talk soap through fighting the enemies, which is a nice character moment for both of them. The main weapons available are craftable glass shivs and box cutters if you want to go full Gus Fring. You have to stun an enemy to use these weapons, but you can use the three bullets for the stun if you're accurate enough. Once you take out his men, Hassan shoots you in the chest, but luckily for you, his gun also only has three bullets in it. I guess it's fair! Instead of literally any other method of murder, he decides to throw you out a window on the side of the building that Ghost is sniping from. That's, uh, hyper convenient, but that's that, I guess. Hilariously, as I was about to shoot Hassan on my second playthrough, the game crashed and the only fix was restarting the level. Really nice of the game to go out on that note. I like the repelling, I want to like the server room section, but the armored enemies make me want to jump off the skyscraper this level takes place on. The sneaking section at the end feels like it took out of place sections from earlier and paid them off really well. I'm gonna give this one a B tier. Get to the boat. Remember the snowmobile from earlier? 
It's like that, but water. We chase Shepard, effortlessly killing entire Zodiac boats filled with hostiles by shooting them with our left hand with an Uzi. This level is so fucking stupid. We continue chasing until he rides his Zodiac into the back of a helicopter, then Price takes his M4 and with three shots, shoots down the helicopter. Then we fall off a waterfall. This game needs more volcanoes and strippers. We fall off the waterfall and end up on the multiplayer map, Russ. Shepard monologues for a while. I promise I don't. Then he stabs us, kicks us in the face, and while he and Price fight, we press F to pull the knife out and kill him with it. Fun fact, this quick time event wouldn't work for me. I hit the button really, really fast and went as far as mapping a second key so I could spam at double speed. Turning on V-Sync fixed it, so I guess 500 FPS was too many Fs per S. It's symbolic and beautiful, I think, that both games failed at the very last second. Oh, right, the list. Yeah, that's enough. Let's actually talk about these campaigns for a second. Hilariously, I think MW2 2022 actually does a great job at following in the original's footsteps. It took a game that actually took itself pretty seriously in showing the darker sides of modern warfare and turned it into action schlock that can't take its foot off the gas for a split second. 2022 is a few more quiet moments, but the tonal shift from each modern warfare to each modern warfare 2 is definitely disappointing. Both games definitely have standout moments, but if you're planning to pick up either game solely for the campaign, there's many much better games I wish you'd buy instead. You can always play these a different way. I enjoyed making this video and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. If you made it this far, I'd like to give you a genuine thanks. This took a lot longer than I thought it would, but I think it paid off. I hope to see you again, and as always, subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel. You didn't think I forgot, did you? The museum is a fun little area only available after completing the campaign. It has a few rooms showing off characters and sets from the campaign. It also has a bunch of weapons you can play with, including the 1911, which I think is only available right here. You can also kill the living statues if you like. There's also a button that says do not press. If you press the button, all the statues come to life and try to kill you. It's a fun little area. I like it. S tier. Why not?